Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. In this video, I'll take you through how I've made my first Necromunda scenery tile. So this is going to be a series of tiles linked together to be kind of an underhive delivery depot, kind of going to do a train station, a loading dock, that kind of thing. And this is representing the repair shop that would be around there. So repairing the damaged vehicles, that type of thing. Now this is not quite the complete tile because I'm going to do some final detailing and mucking it up when all the tiles are done to kind of merge them together, but that gives you the idea. So I'm going to be using the conservator set in this for the vehicles you've just seen also using the Underhive Market that was a new release for Necromunda. And you can see the white tiles in the background. If you've not watched my last week video, these are tiles that I've cast up with resin myself, um, made them, molded them and cast them up because I want to do my own kind of thing. So you can see here very quickly, I've built up the um, first armoured container and I've taken some blue stuff from Green Stuff World there and made a cast of the top of that container because I like the kind of access hatch and I'm going to use that on some detailing on the base later. I've also cast up some of the containers and crates and things so um, I'm going to be making extras than you get in the kit but again I won't put those on until the final detailing stage at the very end of this kind of project. So why am I building some Necromunda Senior Tiles? If you've watched the channel already you know that I've got a Zone Mortalis set that I made from TT Combat. Really really nice, really enjoy it. I wanted something a little different. I also wanted to do a very small table Table. So it's going to be three by two um, to play in my hobby room table rather than like to play in the garage where you know winter is very cold or whatever and I use a bigger board. So really just for some very small scenarios and a bit of fun to make a bit of kind of underhive terrain. So just kind of a slightly different project. Now I can merge it in as well with my 40k board, which is why later on you're going to see I'm going to mount it onto um, a wooden board so I can kind of blend it into both. So you see here just building together the vehicle. Now what I'm doing, I'm not going to build a vehicle exactly right, I'm taking a piece from an old uh, knight weapon kit, I think it was, and it's a blocking over the area where the welding arm would normally come from this little mini tractor, because I want it to represent, this is kind of this little tractor that goes out, um, drags in the damaged loading vehicles to fix in his little repair shop, so um, just a slight alteration there. I'm going to take the pieces from the tractors and from various parts of the kit and sort of build, well you've already seen this, repair shop. So the basis for... Um, my idea behind this is I'm going to be making like a, a train track. You should have seen this already on the channel. I've shown you a 3D printed train, which is going to be bringing equipment and, and supplies into the underhive um, or this area of the underhive. And then this is the area where we're going to unload it, pack it. And you'll see that And uh, as we go through these builds over the next few weeks. So this now is just a printer cartridge box from just a Canon printer. Uh, and I want to build this up to look like some sort of automated repair rig. So you see the pieces I'm kind of saving and salvaging, and this is why. Now, obviously, in a repair shop, we want a vehicle for him to repair. So I've taken the other little tractor vehicle that you get in the um, the kit and just building it up as normal to a certain extent. And then I'm going to cut out the small wheel at the front. And this is obviously the broken part that he's going to be fixing. So all I've done literally is taking a pair of clippers and cutting off that front wheel. Um, which will then try and salvage as much of the track as possible because we can put some links and things on the floor like you've seen in that first video. So fairly simple to remove that front wheel. It's now just a case of uh, bending the track over the wheel rim you see here. Now I did remove the um, the, the, the cogs around there so it would glue down a lot easier. And then once it's glued down, we're going to stick it onto the tractor. Now if you don't want to buy this kit, you could use any you know 40k vehicle, fantasy vehicle, or you could even just use um, build up the repair shop and not bother with the vehicle but I thought it was quite interesting it will give some nice cover when we're you know playing a game and it can run on it so now I'm taking a small um, saw and cutting off around the wheel rim as much of the track as I can rescue now we're not gonna be able to rescue it all uh, but just give some little pieces to drop onto the base there to make it look like he's got spare track links and then really just cutting down the um, tire um, just to be able to then use that as though this is the damaged tire that is removed or wheel that is removed from uh, the machine so I'm not being over careful about how neat and tidy this is um, but just making it look as though this is potentially the broken thing that's come off the vehicle now what i also do here but i'm not going to show you is i cast up again this tire rim with some blue stuff um, so i'm going to make some little castings and moldings of this so i can have a number of these damaged and broken tires or wheels knocking around this scenery piece when i'm completed and that's the point of kind of this build i'm taking it to a certain level i'm going to paint it it's all going to be glued down but then um, i'm going to finish it off later to try and tie the whole thing in what i don't want to do is go overboard with all the detailing and crates and cases and you know bits of sprue on the base that kind of thing and really ruin it for gaming on because it is going to be a gaming piece now you can see here every part while i'm building i'm going back again to that kind of um, metallic um, repair kind of pod that I'm going to be making out of that uh, ink cartridge and just keeping pieces from each kit that I'm building. If you look closer there, we can see in the background as I'm building these canop canopies from the 
uh, market set. What I've done with that little tractor piece is just blocked off where the fixing arm would be, uh, just with a piece of plastic I've cut through. So I'm going to be able to use that arm on the welding kit. So now build under half market uh, parts. Now I've already obviously cut these out and tested them. They will go against the side of the armoured container. And these are really, really nice little parts from that new um, market kit that they've done. Uh, you know, just quite evocative, um, nicely kind of underhive and, and murky, so it works really well. And whether they did it intentionally, I'm sure there was some sort of intent, they are perfectly sized height-wise to fit in with these armoured containers. And I have seen a lot of armoured containers turned into underhive scenery and things. It's just an absolutely ideal thing, because you imagine, obviously, someone in the underhive <laughs> a container comes in, you see it in real life now, ideal place to make a house or, you know, a, a, some sort of, like I've done here, mechanic shop. So... We've done that and we've put that on to dry, put that to one side so it's going to set. And now we're really working on this um, repair machine, as I'm going to call it. So I've got the two kind of mechanical arms that are going to go on it. But obviously the actual uh, ink cartridge looks a little bit plain. You could just stick the arms on there and get away with it. But what I've done is I've taken some ridged plastic card. Now I've got this, uh, quite a lot of it knocking around anyway, but this is leftovers from making my own mortalis boards that you can see in the background there. Um, so I've just cut some little squares and rectangles just to glue on to the um, Epson or Canon printer thing, I think it is, just to really make it look a little bit more interesting than plain plastic. Now there'll be nothing wrong with having it plain plastic if you wanted to. It would paint up absolutely fine, but just a little bit of detail and plastic cards really useful thing to have knocking around in your collection anyway now you see here i'm gluing it on with plastic glue which in theory should work but as you'll see later uh, it doesn't have to fix it and uh, go back so now we're doing i've talked a couple of times about cast up pieces using uh, blue stuff and green stuff well notice this is a modeling compound that you can put on top of any piece of plastic whatever you want to mold when it sets you can then fill that mold with green stuff now i've got a video on how to make these molds which i'll link down below but all this is is this is a uh, mold I'd already made with a little control panel that I'm now slicing out of um, the green stuff and you'll see the rest of what this this full mold is actually later because this is a mold I've made from the Octarius terrain kit um, I've got a video on that uh, doing that terrain as well so you're gonna have a look at that so really just using a little bit of detail now you wouldn't have to do this control panel if you didn't want to there are also little control panels you could take from your bits box I'm sure so really this part to build this kind of piece of equipment is anything you've got in your bits box to make it look a little bit more interesting a little bit more mechanical so i've put the control panel on the side and you super glued it on now i'm gluing the arms onto the plastic card um, where I've, I've built them up around there and i want this to look like kind of a um, machine that would be lift up a vehicle with the big clamp arm and that little welder at the side would go in and, and help out so I've, as I've been building, I didn't really plan to put a second one of the armoured containers involved in this, but as I was building, I wanted a little bit more height. So this build took place over a number of days, and I really did just keep testing, fitting everything, and I thought, right, I want a second level. So I built the container up, and what I've done before I build it, I sliced out um, one of the little panels uh, on the far end, and on the other side, I sliced out a middle panel. I want it to look like this is on top of the, you know, the... Um, workstation as it is and this is kind of probably the house that the, the person is going to be living in on a night time this is where he sleeps so I've cut one out as a doorway and cut the other side as some sort of underhive window now these are uh, just some little plastic sprue stanchions um, or RSJs I think they are uh, and I want to just put this underneath to make a support frame for the end of the container that's going to be overhanging uh, the original container so just gluing these down these are some nice plastic uh, look really good um, and you can see it's going to overhang and I'm going to make a little support structure for this to go on and she measuring it up there and make I'm going to make a little kind of square shape to support that now these containers are brilliant for this kind of making multiple height areas in Necromunda um, you don't need to go to the detail of putting support frames and bits of market stalls and stuff on the side but the more you do the more kind of evocative it makes it um, and it's definitely just a nice little piece of kit and one of the Games Workshop ones that I'd really recommend for any game system sounds like I'm trying to sell stuff here <laughs> um, I'm not but it's a real simple way of just getting that and you get three of them in a box as well if you get the containers kit um, it's a really useful piece of scenery but obviously I'm trying to adapt it here uh, and do something a little bit different as you can see, when it's glued on the top, and I'm going to glue them down because I want this to be static terrain, I don't want it to be scattered terrain, you've got the doorway we're going to deal with later. Now what we're dealing with is, is the window side. You can see on the mat there, I've got the um, like crossed hatch. I think it's an ammo rack, uh, like a mesh ammo rack from the market kit. Now I've made a cast again with blue stuff. You'll see I'm using this a lot in this video, so do check that link down below and I'll show you how to make moulds for this. Now what I've done is a mix of green stuff and milliput here. Um, so you can see in the background I've cast up some 
uh, stuff with just Millie Put. Millie Put's a little bit more solid, um, a little bit more fragile. Green stuff's a little bit more pliant and bendy. Now, I want a mix between the two because I don't want it to be too fragile when we're going to try and put this in the window space. I don't want it to be too bendy because it won't have the rigidity to go in there. So it's a, a green stuff and Millie Put mix. And I'm just putting it into that mold. Now, because I want it to be a window, I don't want to block um, the gaps in between the beams. So I'm making sure that I'm you know, getting getting this um, stuff off the top of um, the raised parts of the mold. So I'm just wetting my finger there and rubbing it so that when this sets, it is going to just give me the like cross hatched beam part of, of this piece of model that I'm casting up. So um, just so you wonder what I'm doing there with the things. Now I wasn't sure it was going to work when I was making this kit. And I do like to experiment when I'm doing scenery projects or even painting projects, try something a little bit different. I really wasn't sure this was going to work um, because obviously it's going to be quite a fragile mesh when you bring this out. Um, so thankfully it did, and obviously that's why it's included in the video. Um, although I do include failures sometimes in videos if something goes wrong and it's worth sort of having a look at. So um, but do experiment, do try new things, do try casting some pieces up, you know, have a go with it. And what I made sure I was doing, I've got the section that I cut out of the container that's going to be the window area, and I was making sure I've made enough of this mesh to cover that amount of space. So just a quick and simple one. So when this is, um, or while this is drying, I'm working now on the other doorway cover. So again, another piece from the really good market set, the Commander one. And I want to make it look fairly basic, as though his entrance into um, the sleeping area of this, this shed is just blocking it off with bit of cloth so cutting that out cutting the uh, pole to size across the top so it almost looks like a curtain that's stuck into uh, the doorway there again the undive market kit like on a sales pitch again full of really useful little pieces that really add some detail to your scenery now you could obviously make this out of a green stuff flap or something that would be fine but it's just a real simple way of doing it now what i want is i want the top of the lower container to look like the way that they're, they're going to access into um, there so I've just again cut down some plastic card so there's like a bit of the meshing um, that's going to be like a bit of a decking plank to walk into the sleeping area and then just glue that down on top of the lower armoured container. So now I'm moving on to some milliput putting again. So all this was done at the same sort of time so that, you know, I've made the milliput put cast. You can see the, the window drying there in the background and try and do multiple bits while you've got the, you know, the wet milliput put and green stuff working on. So when you're doing a project, try and make the maximum use of, of what that little hobby time is going to be. And this was my time to do some of the green stuff and things. So I'm literally blending in the little control panel piece that I've put on. There's some cabling coming down. So now I'm just using some of that green stuff to extend that cable into the floor. Now I'm taking, you see here, a little um, green stuff wall tool again. It's a cable maker. Start making some cables that are going to go on the top of this piece of equipment. Now, annoyingly, I've lost a lot of the footage uh, for making these cables that are going to link these mechanical arms into the little repair pod, but you'll see it later what I've made. And this just makes some really nice rigid effects onto um, this cable. Now, if you don't have one of the green stuff wall roll makers, I will link them down below so you can go have a look and you know pick yourself one up if you fancy it. Uh, I've got a video on how to use it, but I've also got a video on how to do the same effect with a comb and some green stuff that I'll link below if you want to do it, how to make some real cool cables. Now I've just made some little rivets and a piece of equipment, uh, like a little rivet maker. Again, another green stuff world. It's like I'm green stuff world salesman today. Um, not trying to be, but it's just all these are really cool little bits of equipment to have for multiple projects, and it really adds a little bit of vibrancy. Now you don't have to put these little rivets to hold down this um, panel. But I just thought I added that little bit of detail. And sometimes it's those little touches that bring a little diorama into life rather than just being a sort of flat section that's, you know, welded down or whatever. It just adds a little bit of um, difference on there. Now, I made these while the green stuff was setting from the other pieces you've seen. So this is a following session. Um, so this is the following day. And you see I've made, I've glued one down with super glue and then used some of the excess super glue to stick the other one down. As you can see now, these have been thoroughly dried overnight, as I said, and I'm trying super carefully to get this mesh out. You saw it nearly started cracking and fracturing when I was taking it out down one side. So really just super carefully edging these out. Um, it sort of worked. You can see here it was kind of breaking a little bit, but I do glue it back together and rescue it. So um, yeah, it worked definitely, uh, but it'd be difficult to do it over a larger area. Again, definitely a good experiment. So now I'm just filing it down and using the piece of plastic that we removed from the window, so to speak, as we have a line guide to cut it out. Now I did keep the top um, metal beam and then just using a pair of tweezers, keep test fitting it, file it down a little bit and super glued it into the gap. And this repaired some of the areas that had kind of fractured. I'm definitely glad I did it with a green stuff and milliput mix. I think if I'd done this with milliput, it would have shattered, taken it out of the mold. If I'd done it purely with green stuff, I think it would have been too kind of flexible 
and again maybe wouldn't work so um, another you know technique for the arsenal is to mix you know millie put and green stuff together just literally 50 50 i've got plenty of my videos where i've shown you millie put and green stuff um but yeah definitely worthwhile and i really like the effect that this kind of mesh window has because obviously the underhive there wouldn't really be a need to have a, a solid window because it's not like you're stopping rain and that kind of thing apart from maybe some acid showers from above that you do get in the game um but yeah really effective nice little indoor window so now i've taken that molding you saw earlier i did a blue stuff mold of the top of the container um, and i filled that with pure milliput you can see here when i'm trimming it down milliput shatters and cracks it is very very rigid it takes a decent bit of detail so i'm just cleaning this up and then i'm going to mount this on a separate little piece of plastic card if you watch my video on making my zone mortalis tiles each of these is one and three quarter inches so i've just cut a little square on my zone mortalis tiles i left several sections blank um, where there is no little square and that is some detail that's going to be made to go on to that and you'll see that again when i put it on later so here's two moldings i've done again just to show the difference the top one's made out of green stuff the bottom one's a green stuff and really put mix uh, and you see here this is where i've taken that control panel from that i put on earlier so now i'm just going to finish off the little um, machine fixie kit i want to call it a really better name for it would be a good idea you can see the cabling that i've put on there a lot of them now is trimmed down that other molding piece and I want to use the fan from that and I'm just gluing it onto where I've put some of that plastic card on the back to make it look like this is some sort of cooling vent for um, you know the machine that's going to be fixing so another sort of I suppose watch out and a thing to think about is whenever you're building kits or you're doing some sort of project always try and keep in mind what you can do for the next project you know so maybe make some castings of uh, the vent maybe take some pieces out of that you know build your Bix box up to start getting all those little bits and bobs that you're going to be able to use in future projects so you know definitely what helps myself now in any of these projects as i've doing over the years is that i've kept all the pieces and bits and i've made some castings and i've done some stuff and it becomes easier and easier and easier to do projects the more you kind of have um, speaking about that i wanted a way to gain access to the top container so obviously when they're coming in they want to climb up some sort of ladder to get up the top and this is a ladder kit from the remains of a tt combat um it's the zone mortalis kit that i used and built up to do my zone mortalis board it's the remains of that kit and when i built my zone mortalis board i didn't use any of the ladders or access ways i wanted it pure zone mortalis so again that was knocking around the garage i dug that out i've built the staircase i've not used the rungs on the side and then i've covered the very top rung with a bit of the plastic card again just to blend it in now i said before how i'd use plastic glue to glue together the um, repair shop kit now it didn't work um, the plastic that obviously that um canon printer things made out of is not suitable for using with uh, normal normal kind of plastic glue and it was coming off so i just pulled them all off used some super glue to glue them all back down again but you can see those cables that i've made there fitting in quite nicely so there we go that's all the different pieces of this kit that i want to kind of use and i kept test fitting it taking some pictures making sure i was happy and now it's the paint scheme now i'm not going to go into massive detail with the paint scheme because i've shown that uh, on my zone mortalis kind of board i followed a similar thing but the beauty of necromunda terrain is you don't have to be too careful whenever i'm painting things for necromunda terrain particularly i always leave bits of metal showing through you can see here i've sprayed black and then i've used a lead belcher to give a metallic um sort of effect the great thing is you can be a little bit messy you can leave bits of metal showing and that just adds to that kind of aged necromunda vibe so it wasn't too complicated a paint scheme i think i did the painting over a couple of evenings for the whole board and just tried to pick colors that i'd used across my necromunda gangs for one or that i could see working well together on the board so i've done some blues for one container uh, some reds and then with little vehicles i've decided to go for like an orange color because it looks a bit sort of workman related so anything that's kind of obviously owned by um, the workman or whatever whether it be the toolkits whether it's the metal and the vehicles or that kind of repair pod i've done in a kind of orange metallic uh, now this filet wash you've seen before i use it quite a lot and it really blends everything together makes it all nice and dirty looking and particularly useful for you know necromunda and sort of 40k pieces so uh, that's how i done the painting and you'll see when i do the board in a second that i use the same sort of techniques so i'm mounting this terrain onto a piece of mdf the reason being is i've done a 40k city fight board that's mounted onto mdf and if i use these tiles on the same mdf i'm going to be able to put them on the edge of my 40k board and use some of this in the terrain so it's great so these are the tiles that i've made in that previous video you can take a look and all i'm using is gorilla glue to glue them down now if you're using gorilla glue it expands when you um stick it on so don't put it right near the edge because you'll get tons and tons of kind of press out so you can see these tiles i'm just sticking down there's the um little access vent that i've done and stuck onto a small piece of plastic guide you can see in that top corner and i'm just lining up these um four pieces onto the board 
to um, get them stuck down. Now with the really loose stuff, you have to weight it, push it down and put some weight on top to make sure it sets and you get the angle. Now, unfortunately, when I put the weight on top, even though I was happy with the position and didn't quite position it right, ended up with a couple of big gaps. Uh, look, these things go wrong, nothing wrong with that. And it also, some of the glue did bleed out of the side. So just a little bit of trimming and tidying up to do just to really get it um, exactly perfect. That's no problem. This stuff's, you know, not too bad to cut off and it does cut off quite easy just with um, this craft knife there. So give it a bit of tidying up and then we're going to try and fill those gaps in those underactive panels. Now my concept behind these homemade tiles that I made was that these are kind of bolted onto a superstructure, um, hence why there's four bolts on it. So there's no real problem that you've got these gaps, but they're just a little bit too big. Because if you were to expand that gap up to um, human sized, it would that would be like a foot wide gap and clearly you wouldn't want that in your underactive floor. So small gaps fine, gap that size a bit much. So just filling it with some milliput there. And now again, to talk about the painting, I'm not going to go through the painting, but you can see um, that we've done the first stage, we've ink washed it, and now we're just kind of detailing up um, what's left of the models um, to make it a dirty underhive effect. Now, here's the painted models. So I've painted them all. We've got a really nice looking dirty effect and, and the kind of orangey effect with the equipment we're using. You can see some of the scattered train equipment um, that I'm using there. So quite happy with how we've done that. So now it's time to start on the actual board. And I'm hopefully trying to show you the stages I went through doing this. You know, I'm not trying to show you a completed board in one chunk, really kind of demonstrate the different things I do at different times. Now what I'm doing now is just some PVA glue and I'm banging some sand on there to make little PVA glue and sand patches. Now, would you get sand in them? I'm not necessarily, but this can be painted up as a bit of dirt and muck. Um, it is something I've done on the basis of my necrum and the figures just to put a little bit of texture on. Now you could go crazy and put loads and loads and loads on. You could also blend in the um, mechanical bits that you're sticking down, but I'm gonna do that later. Like I've said, I'm gonna do some final detailing when all the boards are finished and I've got them put together. So you can see I've now sprayed the board black and then silver once obviously all the PVA is dried. I'm gonna do a little bit of detailing. So what I'm doing here is making my own little line guide. So obviously Necromunda is covered in hazard stripes, we know that, um, but I didn't want to print some out and stick them on. I wanted to do some very mucky, dirty, worn down hazard stripes. So to do that, I've made a little line guard. Now what I've done here is literally just square of plastic card. And I've marked the plastic card, hopefully you can see there, with little every half a centimetre down one side. And then I've scored lines from one to one a few centimetres down to make some nice straight lines and now I'm just cutting them out. So I've already scored it here, now I'm just slicing these out. Now the hope is I can use this as, as kind of a line guide to put on hash markings in certain areas. Now you will see why I'm choosing these panels to put hash markings on when I do my next panel. Some of what I've planned isn't going to make a whole lot of sense until you see all four of the panels together, but this is kind of, I want this to be like an access way that they don't want to get covered with boxes, crates or anything like that because this is the kind of access way from the rail yard that I'm going to do um, up to this repair shop and the loading bay that I'm going to do at the other side of this. So all I'm doing now though is I've made these lines one and three quarter inch wide so that I can drop them on top of the square panels that I've got on my own mortalis section and uh, paint them on quite easy. So you can see here I've done the yellow and the black and now it's really just painting this board to match with the scenery we've done. So this is the same wash that we're banging over the top. Um, and it goes over the whole board and then we'll sort of merge it into the terrain and my figures because I use the same wash on the figures and that can be quite important if you've done a certain painting style on your models you need to make sure you're kind of doing a very similar painting style on your scenery otherwise they will really kind of garishly stand out which is kind of fine if you're doing like one model to stand out and be not as under high -vee, but you do really want your terrain to reflect your scenery so this is now when the wash has dried and now I'm going to go through the whole process but I'm just doing a simple dry brush up using some bronze and some silver across all different parts of the um, base to really kind of make it a bit dirty but also some areas clean where the footprints might have been and clean up some of the hash markings and things and make it hopefully blend in so now i've again test fitted all these pieces onto the board making sure i'm happy with their final locations before gluing them down you don't have to glue them down i suppose but i want this to be a you know a glued down scenery piece so now i'm just taking off um what i need to just using super glue now to glue them down like i've said there is some uh, sand and things done on there which i've painted up but I'm going to do some more detailing when I've done the multiple boards because I want to make sure there's enough space to play on it for a start but then I also want to make sure that um, there's enough detail to make it look interesting so it's going to be a fine balance and I want to just leave some of the final detailing until I've got all sort of four of the boards done so once I've glued that down that effectively is the board done and we're back to that original shot 
showing you the Thunderhive repair shop, which I hope you like what I've done. You can see there's some scratch built stuff, some um, bits that are converted, some stuff that's cast up, a nice little window to the thing there. So quite a bit of work put into this, quite a lot of little techniques that we've used. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed that, hopefully that's inspired you to give it a go, or come back and see what I do for my next few tiles. So I hope you enjoyed that. Check out me on Instagram and Facebook, Adam's Hobby Stuff, and I'll see you next time.